Hello, my name is Dr. Alex Rutgers. I am the Chief of Pediatric Plastic Surgery and Director of Cleft and Craniofacial Surgery at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Today, I want to speak to you about Lafort 1 osteotomy for cleft patients. For many patients undergoing the longitudinal cleft team care, the Lafort 1 osteotomy and rhinoplasty represent the finishing phases of care. After children have undergone multiple operations for their cleft lip, cleft palate, possible speech surgery, and bone graft procedures, it's common that the top jaw does not grow at the same pace as the lower jaw. About 30 to 40% of patients with unilateral cleft lip and palate and over 50% of patients with a bilateral cleft lip and palate will develop an underbite or class three malocclusion. This can impact the child's ability to speak normally, chew foods, and can lead to increased risk of obstructive sleep apnea or a difficulty breathing during sleep, which can be stressful for the heart and lungs. All of these factors make it very important to consider corrective jaw surgery on teenage cleft patients who have cleft-related dental discrepancies. Additionally, the operation has the benefit of reestablishing fullness to the middle of the face and providing support for the nose. It generally improves the appearance and smile. You can consider the goals of the operation to place the jaws in the position they were supposed to be in without the cleft. Corrective jaw surgery is more than a single procedure. It's a complex treatment process carried out with an orthodontist team member. It's important to have an orthodontist straighten the teeth so that they can fit together and we can give your child the functional, healthy smile they deserve. Corrective jaw surgery is also typically performed after growth. We know that the top jaw finishes growth before the bottom jaw. And if we intervene too soon, there's always the possibility of a patient outgrowing the correction. For this reason, we usually wait until girls are 16 or 17 years of age and boys are 18 or 19 so that we can make sure they have finished their adolescent growth. In more severe cases, we do sometimes consider early treatment for children using a different procedure called a Lafort 1 distraction. That is something your surgeon can discuss with you in more detail if they feel it is appropriate for your child. Teenagers undergoing a Lafort 1 osteotomy usually spend one or two nights in the hospital recovering. During the operation, special instruments are used to cut the bones of the top jaw so that they can be brought forward into a position where the teeth fit together in a normal relationship. Titanium plates and screws are placed to secure the jaw. Wiring the jaw shut is not necessary following the procedure. Often, families ask if there are problems with metal detectors or other issues related to the plates and screws needed at the time of surgery. This is not the case. The plates are designed to remain for the remainder of the patient's life, and additional surgery to remove them is typically not indicated. Following the corrective jaw surgery, it is important to allow the bones to heal. Patients will need to be on a soft liquid pureed or no-chew diet for roughly six weeks to allow for this to occur. I always use the analogy that you don't wanna walk on a broken leg and you shouldn't chew on a jaw that is healing following surgery. Typically, you should expect about one to two weeks off of school and light activity. Competitive sports or heavy demanding labor jobs will require six weeks until they can be resumed. As I mentioned, treatment with corrective jaw surgery includes a treatment process with an orthodontist. Patients typically require six to eight months of braces to get ready for their operation and then following the procedure and an additional six to 12 months of braces is typically necessary to give them the perfect smile that they, we have planned for them. This is a very rewarding operation for young people who are approaching the end of their cleft journey. They are often very satisfied with the outcomes, including the improvement of their facial form, their speech, their smile, and their ability to breathe. It also lays the foundation for their final step of their cleft journey, which is the rhinoplasty or nasal reconstruction. Advancing the upper jaw lays the foundation for optimal rhinoplasty results. At the end of the treatment, the teen should move forward into the world feeling comfortable and confident in their appearance and function, knowing that they had optimal cleft, cleft care. We look forward to continuing to care for you and your child at Johns Hopkins All Children's Craniofacial Team. Thank you.